Good morning. morning. This morning's scripture reading will be from the book of Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, 1 through 4. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings, and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the, Christ, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the glory that will never fade away. The church said, Amen. Thank you, Phil. Lots of excitement today. So, I believe she is going to be okay. And since we're talking about elders and things like that today, the first job of an elder is to offer medical assistance seems so it's a good thing we have people who are very caring here who can uh, assist with things there's lots of other things that are going to be going on next week is going to be a picnic and so that's an exciting time to get to go out and just get to be with each other and play together for a little bit so that's at falcon field and you're going to have the perfect lunch so you already know that right because you're going to bring it <laughs> So, you know, it's going to be the perfect lunch because that's what you're going to go get for yourself. Uh, Cane's is just down the road. That's the tradition, so that's what mine does. I know we've got a lot of winter visitors here today, and uh, some of you guys are going to be heading out pretty soon. So, I know some of you, this is your last week, and we're going to miss you a lot. Uh, We'll see you next year. But uh, it's been great having a lot of you here to be able to worship with us. We've been talking about evangelism a lot, and I want to mention a special class that is going on right now. It's in room 105, and Wilburn Ivy is teaching that class, and it's actually on how to do evangelism. And so if you're interested in doing that or learning how or feeling like you don't know, uh, that's a good place to end up next Sunday. So Sunday morning, it'll be in room 105, and uh, he would appreciate you being there, and he'll show you exactly what it's all about and how to be able to do it and give you some, some good insights into it. So today we're talking about shepherds, about elders, and they had said we you know, might be interested in finding some more. So we're kind of looking, but this is kind of an introductory thing. So this is about what happens. What do they do? What does it look like? Well, if you look at Scripture and things, the main concern of a shepherd is to be able to find food and water. It's also to be able to take care of the flock, make sure you don't you know, drive them too hard and that they have protection from wild animals, that there's protection from weather. There's a lot of things that would uh, try to destroy them. And so they would keep them in a pen at night to keep them all safe. And then they would let them out in the day and take them to the pasture and take them to water. And, and they would just take care of them. And so that seems to be the picture that's giving. And I think the main reason why he talks about it this way and why they're called shepherds is because he's trying to give you more than just here's your job description. He's trying to give you here's what this looks like. And so it, it comes from two sides, however. It comes from, one is, is elders are important. We need them to be over us. The other side is we're sheep. We're the ones that they're taking care of. And just how hard do you want to make it? Uh, there are some things that we can do as well. And so I think that's important also. And that's the reason for this kind of an image. You see several times it's mentioned. I know Jesus talks about it as, as sheep without a shepherd, and that, that really means a lot to them. They can tell exactly what that's all about. As sheep who are just scattered, they have no direction, they don't know where to go, they don't know how to get anything done. And he says that's why there's a need for shepherds. 
Ezekiel 34 talks about this, about the leaderless sheep are being scattered. David's the symbol of a good shepherd, and he talks about his shepherd in Psalm 23, which is God. We see in Timothy and Titus, it talks about qualifications for shepherds or bishops or elders, depending on your, your translation. Overseers is another word. And most of those are character-based. Some are physical, but a lot of them are character-based, but it does not describe what they do. It's all about them, and it doesn't say anything about what the real job is. And so the passage that Phil has read for us here in 1 Peter talks a little bit more about that. And so Peter talks about himself being an elder first. And so here's what he wants to say to elders. And so the first is, I exhort you the elders. I exhort the elders. And so he's trying to say, I'm a fellow elder with you. And here's what I want to say for you. And he goes in and he talks about how they should shepherd the church of God. That they should exercise oversight, that it should be something where they're willing. It's not really for their own gain. It doesn't matter if it's shameful gain or regular gain or good gain. It's not about you. And that's one of the main things I think it talks about is that when you have a shepherd, the shepherd, the main task is it's about the sheep. It's not really about how good a shepherd is. Because you can have a great shepherd. Man, he has such a, he has no sheep. None of them like him. They won't follow him at all. But he has the greatest staff. He has the greatest walk. He looks like a shepherd. He's not a shepherd. Unless sheep are there to follow him, he's not a shepherd. So it's not especially about how you look. It's about your relationship with the sheep. And so that's one of the things that's most important that he talks about here. He talks about Jesus coming to give a crown of glory and about how younger ones should be subject to elders. And so that's one of the things that he's describing in this passage about what shepherds are like and what their task is. And that they do this willingly. It's something that they can enjoy doing. It's something that, that they recognize is important to do. So let me give you some thoughts on what this is all about, on what shepherds really are. The first is it is about sheep, and the matter of you relating to the sheep is most important. It also helps if sheep are, you know, going to be helpful. It helps if they're going to be ones who will allow this to happen. Uh, the way you do it is what matters. So do the sheep want someone over them? A lot of times, no, they dearly don't. I don't want anybody over me. I'm going to do it my own way. And so we go out and we eat all the food and we drink all the water and we stay up all night and we go, huh, I'm exhausted and there's nothing left to eat. I'm starving here. Somebody help me. Well, that would mean you need a shepherd. You shouldn't have eaten all the food at first and made yourself sick. You shouldn't have drank all the water. And now you stayed up all night and... You're throwing a tantrum. That's what it amounts to. A shepherd will say, there's got to be some limitations here. There's got to be a way in which all of this happens. A way in which you're able to do this. And so, the shepherd is the one who helps with this. Maybe it's like, you know, the time when you let your kids not take a nap. And they are able to stay up and do great until about 5 or 6 o'clock. And then... They just start screaming and start hollering and start yelling because they're exhausted. They're too tired. Well, why would you insist? Because it's going to be best for them. And sometimes we don't have the good sense to do what we know we ought to do. And we need somebody else there to instruct, to tell, but mainly to be an example. And that's what he talks about in 1 Peter as well, is about being an example of what it means to be grown up what it means to be mature, and how to live a life. And so I think first is you find someone who's caring. Because if they don't care, they're not going to be good shepherds. You've got to at least care about people and care about the sheep. And so we need someone with compassion like that. One of the other things that's mentioned a lot about shepherds is the idea of family. 
First, that they've got a family that they're able to take care of and that they do a good job in taking care of that family. Second, that that family stands behind them and wants them to do that and recognizes this. And so that family is something that's really, really important because it's a micro look into how they're going to manage people and to what they're going to do with them and for them. And so if they don't do well with their family, he says, maybe that's a good indication they're not going to do well with a whole group. And so let's make sure that they're able to do that part first. And so there's some qualifications about family, and mainly that that family stands behind him. And that they recognize, you know, a lot of it has to do with the way we behave as well. And so that's an important thing. You need somebody who can finish the project. Not somebody who's just good at starting, but somebody who's able to see it all the way through. Somebody's able to finish whatever they started. That it's not just, well, let's try this, well, let's try this, well, let's try this, well, let's try that. And No, once we start, we're going to finish the project. We're going to get all the way through it. He doesn't quit in the middle and walk off and say, no, it's just too hard. And so that would be a disaster if we had a shepherd like that. It's a man with God's heart. It's a man who cares about what God thinks. And it's a man who has compassion for other people. He speaks up. He shows up. You can depend on him to do what he says he'll do. But he also knows his limitations. And he's going to say no sometimes to some things. Because he knows he can't do it all. He's also going to say no on some things that aren't good for us. Just like our parents did. Because they know it's not good for us to have everything we want all the time we don't turn out so well it would be great if we did it would be great if people were mature enough to be able to handle their life and be able to do things but you know a lot of times that's when we start picking up things in disaster and people mess up and and do so many things that it's hard to get it back And that's why shepherds are so very, very important. They can give us guidelines. They can show us how to be. They can show us how to act. They can say, here's what's going to turn out best. And, of course, we are sheep that will listen, right? Everyone go like this. (laughs) We are sheep who will listen. (laughs) Okay. You guys need some more practice on that one. (sighs) A shepherd is somebody who plans ahead. He's making arrangements for the future. He's got a clear idea of where we need to be, of what needs to be done. They're looking for ways to make it all happen. There are individual sheep that they take care of, but then there's the whole body as well, and so both of those are important. But they have a clear goal of what we should be, not only as individuals, but also what we should be as a group together. And so they're able to see those things and know those things. And when we, when we get to a certain level, they're able to say, all right, here's the next step up. And here's the next step up. And so they're going to lead in the way that's going to be best. We are able to learn. We're able to do. We're able to develop. We're able to become. And that's one of the things that's most important is that they are here to develop the sheep, to take care of them, and to let us be the best that we're able to be. Having said that, a lot of times we think big is better. I'm not sure big is always better. Think about yourself. Is big always better? If you weigh 500 pounds, would that be better? Well, I'm just not tall enough. <laughs> That's the problem, right? It's got to be where we're healthy. It's not just about size. Is size good? Yeah, size is good. I mean, God starts with 3,000 in the first church on one day. And then everybody daily after that. So God is not afraid of size. But elders are able to see and understand where we need to go, what needs to be done, and how do you take care of so many people? And it's not just about swelling. Because swelling isn't always good. But if you're growing, that can be a whole lot better. 
And when you look at the sheep on this, how does that shepherd keep all of those sheep in line? How is he ever going to do that? I mean, that's a lot. And the, some of them are way at the back. And you know the guys in the back are cutting up, right? <laughs> Isn't that the way it always happens? It's got to be. And so how is he ever going to be able to take care of that many sheep? Well, there's one way. Sheep follow a shepherd. As soon as they don't follow a shepherd, then they're going to be gone. They're going to be lost. And it is a choice. But the way you take care of so many is sheep follow a shepherd. There is no other direction for that. There's no other way. It's not about him driving them or forcing them or trying to get behind them. He's trying to make sure that they're healthy. He's trying to make sure that they can move. And big only works if we follow a shepherd. That's the only way. And then he must be willing to do it. Not because he has to. Okay? Sometimes you've had jobs you have to do. And you know how it turns out. You don't do a good job of what you have to do and don't like and hate. You know, we don't like those things. But if he's willing and he likes to do it and he wants to do it and it's something that he sees as important to do. He says that's the type of person you want. Of course sheep could make it easier for him to do that, right? I mean sometimes we're the ones that get in the way. But it shouldn't be a burden especially when he's trying to lead people to Christ. The point is, we need people to think about it. We need people to say, that's what I want to be sometime. And it doesn't matter whether you're young or whether you're only a year or two away or whether you're a month away or whatever it is. We need encouragement for people to develop into this type of leadership. Because if we're not developing those from within, what does that say about us? There is another step up. There is another direction we need to go. There are some things that need to happen. And so what I'm asking is for us to be able to have men who are looking for this work, who are able to train, who are not just resistant to it, but who are able to find it and say, this is something that is good for me to do. Now, it isn't good for everybody to do. We already talked about that in the first part. If you have no compassion whatsoever, please don't try to be an elder. Uh, that's just not going to turn out well. And so there are some things that are important with that. I think there's a reason why we don't see this very often. And there's a reason why there becomes a shortage of people who are able to be elders. Let me see if I can describe this to you. I think what happens is they start out well... And they decide, yes, I'm going to be compassionate. Yes, I'm going to care for the sheep. And then you find out the plumbing in the building doesn't work. Well, somebody's got to fix that. Well, who do we call? Well, let's call an elder. And then you find out the youth minister is messing up. Well, who do you get for that? Well, let's call an elder because who's going to straighten out a youth minister? It's got to be an elder, right? And then people are not doing what they're supposed to, and so we're going to call the elder. And then, But there's a building project that needs to go on. The stage needs to be built. So who do you get? Well, we call an elder. Yeah, I know it's Jackie, right? <laughs> we have even a specific elder for that one. And you get to doing so many of the things that are about facility and that are about organization and are about all this other stuff that pretty soon it gets to be like, like you're on a board and you're over this whole thing and you're trying to manage facilities and it's not just about shepherding a sheep or even a group of sheep. It's about trying to run the whole place. And it gets to be like it's this whole successful sheepfold thing that has to be done because after all, that's what we want. We want the price of mutton to be up and the price of wool to be up and that's a premium and we're primarily on income and revenue and there's got to be enough money to be able to take care of all this. And so you end up trying to say, well, we've got to do whatever we can to make it successful. 
And the more people that are being attracted, the better it is. And so let's see what we can do to attract more people. And whatever brings in more sheep, whatever increases production to the sheepfold. And then you find that taking care of the sheep kind of gets to be secondary. Well, we've got to take care of them so they'll stay. And so it becomes more about the success of the sheepfold. I don't think because they ever intended it that way, but because they get pushed into it, because everybody calls. You've got to fix this. And so the sheepfold, this is a real sheepfold, by the way, is a pen or a place where they were able to contain the sheep and able to take care of them and able to say, here's what it is. But is it about sheep or is it about getting the branches in the right place? Is it about sheep or is it about moving that thing so it goes from place to place? Is it about sheep or you recognize there's a whole lot of those things that go on. And I think it's true from the other side because the sheep that are in there say, we don't like this sheepfold. We want a better sheepfold. That one's got green grass and it's got rock and it's much better. We like sheepfolds like this. And how do you get those? Call an elder. Right? Isn't that how we do it? Because we're going to treat them like a board. We're not going to treat them like they're really shepherds. Every single little tiny thing that goes wrong and every single little tiny thing that we want, we're going to call and say, you guys should solve this. Which makes them a board. Well, but that's good because then we can complain when things aren't good enough, right? And we like to do that. It's always good to have someone to complain to. So if we complain, well, we need better pen conditions. We need better food. We need less pen time and more pasture time. We don't like those sheepdogs. Keep them out of here. They bark at us. We don't like those. And so then we can bring our list of grievances to the elders, to the board of the sheepfold and we have created a monster that's not what they're there for and it isn't what you want because now they don't get to take care of sheep and it's real hard when someone is trying to say to you you've got to fix this to say no I won't I am going to be a shepherd. I am going to take care of sheep. I am going to lead them the best way I know how, both individually and as a group. And I am not going to get caught in all the rest of this bored mess that makes me responsible for every single little tiny toilet that ever gets clogged or pushed or things that get dropped or every single thing that goes on. Because that's not a shepherd. And today we have people who actually choose a church based on what they can get out of it. It happens. We want a successful sheepfold. And so people can come and the more they get out of it, the more they want to stay. And it makes us want to do it that way. The shepherd will give us what we want and the sheepfold is run on the wishes of the sheep and the shepherds do what the sheep want right that's not a shepherd the shepherd is one who leads the sheep who don't know what they need and yeah they may have lots of complaints and they may have lots of things that go wrong and they may say well you should fix this a lot of times that's what happens with us. Who would want to be over a sheepfold where it was just a lot of people who complained? No wonder we have a hard time finding shepherds. Nobody wants to be on the board. We want real shepherds. It's one of the most stressful jobs there is. Because sometimes you have to say, I'm going to do the job right and not do what you're telling me. I have to. It should be the joy of leading in a spiritual group to greater heights. 
rather than people telling you how much you have to take care of. And what it turns out many times is this. You've got to fix it. You're not giving me what I want. I tried and tried and tried to find a video clip. <laughs> All the video clips I could find were three minutes long, and I didn't figure you could take listening to a kid scream for three minutes while a parent is being coached by a professional nanny who stands there and says, do not pick him up. Do not give in to him. Do not do what he wants. Because as soon as you do that, he has won. And you will be doing it until he is grown. You cannot cater to the tantrum of the sheep. Don't do it. It's the whole reason we put you in there as a shepherd. Say no. Say this isn't right. And when we throw our tantrum, you know the best way to get over that. You're not getting whatever you want when you throw a tantrum. You're not getting whatever you want when you threaten to leave. You're not getting whatever you want when you say, well, I'm just not going to support you anymore. I'm going to do my job. You're not getting whatever you want when you start making demands. We have shepherds. This is not a sheep-run democracy. We have shepherds. We need to trust them to do this. We need to be sure that they're going to do it. And as long as people focus on what an organization can do for them, we will never have a strong church. We are sheep who are banded together. And the building and all this other stuff is important, but not important for what they do. We should be able to take care of each other. We should be able to take care of, of different things and leave them to lead us and to guide us. It's why you have deacons. They can take care of those things, and when they don't do their job, all of a sudden it all falls back on elders, right? Oh, well, the elders have to do it, so let's all complain to them. No, go complain to a deacon or two. Say, we're not dumping everything on shepherds because that's what their task is, and we want them to be able to do it well. We're here for one reason. We all want to be better in serving Jesus. That's really what it's all about. And that is what makes the difference. Elders can't make you do what you don't want to do. They're not going to be able to force you. They can talk about the need for ministry. And we will do just about as well as we decide we're going to do. If we are not going to do it, don't expect them to jump in and pick it up because we've destroyed the shepherd if we do. Jesus cared for sheep, and I think one of the most important things it talks about is the way that Jesus was a shepherd. And so look with me at 1 Peter chapter 2 this time in verse 21. He says, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep. You have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. And Jesus is the great shepherd. He is the one. He's facing the problem of suffering, and he says, look at Jesus and what Jesus did. He's the example. He committed no sin. He had no deceit. He did not talk back. 
He was not threatening. He entrusted himself to God, and he was the example. And so he put himself on the line. He bore our sins on the cross, and we were redeemed by his blood so that we might be alive. He healed our wounds. It was personal with him. It was not a board. It was not something that was a business model. He says, we've returned to Jesus, the shepherd and overseer of our souls. And that's really what it's about. We've got to get the goal straight. We've got to decide where we're going to be. Also, if our souls are under Jesus, it makes the work easier. We follow his leading. We follow his rules. We follow his guidelines. We get the food at the right time. So we're going to be here for worship. We're going to be here for Bible class. We're going to learn to study. And we're going to need those relationships and that interaction with each other because that's so very important. And we're going to need that grace and redemption. And we're going to share that grace and redemption with everybody else who needs grace. And that becomes so important, the qualities that are shared among the sheep of the love and the grace that we have for each other. And we limit ourselves to the way Jesus wants it to be done. Not just because somebody else is doing it, but the way that Jesus wants. And we can run away and not be part of it. We can do that. We're on our own. We'll fight for ourselves. We know enough. We don't have to listen to you. You either accept the shepherd or you don't. It's not that they're perfect, but they're shepherds. You let them guide you or you don't. You follow or you don't. If you don't, it's all on you. You're saying, I can do it better. I can change my own diapers. I can do whatever I want to do. You know, maybe we need to work in this together. Maybe we need to recognize this is an organic thing. It's like a family. It grows together because people care. And elders have compassion. And that's what they do best. It talks a lot about family and about having the right family. We see some people, and I've known some in the past, who have been really good guys. But the wife completely disqualified him. Or the kids decided to do something that there's no way they could be. It just completely destroyed him. So it is a family thing. It does involve every single one of us. Shepherds are not just about the guy we get to pick so we can put him up front. So then we can blame him and criticize and hand all of our problems to him. Now he's the shepherd. Everybody else falls in line and follows and does the things that are going to make this work. That model works. That's how God does. That's what Jesus did. He looked at people and he said, follow me. And then they either did or they didn't. And so let me ask you today, is Jesus your shepherd? Is there anything that he's asked you to do? Has he asked you to repent? Has he asked you to follow him? Has he asked you to do something for him? Is there anything that you're refusing to do? Maybe it's time you did some of those. Maybe it's time that you were able to pray. Maybe it's time that you repented of sins and were baptized into him. Maybe it's time that you said, I am willing to follow wherever you lead. Because that's what makes all the difference. Today, if we can help you in following our great shepherd, would you come while we stand and sing?